Hello and welcome back to my video series on the Gilcrest Museum. This is the last video on this museum. Um, the first half of this video will not have sound. I'll just have some music playing in the background like the last one just because I'm still going through the museum. And again, guys, I have to be very discreet. Um, you know, there's people around taking an art in one room or gallery. There were people actually looking at the photos. Well, I think it was a drawing or a painting class, something like that. So I want to be very respectful of the museum itself and the people there taking it in as well. So that's why I'm not going through talking and doing things like that, because it's like a library, essentially, with art and hardwood floors. So... Um, again, it's very nice. Uh, in the second part of this video, I actually was leaving the Gilcrease Museum and I realized there's these gardens and all of these, uh, you know, beautiful open areas uh, behind the museum. So I kind of walked around there and did some commentary. And you'll hear the usual quirkiness that is me walking around in nature. So I hope you guys enjoy and I will see you at the end of this video. So just taking a little walk after I've seen the exhibit, man, um, just give my final thoughts on the museum and I use kind of an odd word to describe it. I would say overwhelming. I mean, it was such a lot, uh, it was so much to take in and, um, process I mean as you can see they had an african-american uh, study or <laughs> World War two uh, one and just a war um, little I don't even know what to call it but anyway they had a section on uh, war propaganda for black you know african-americans and um, you know there's a lot of in Native American art and just a lot of, you know, war stuff about this country and me being, you know, an American one, um, African American, and then also a 16 Cherokee. It was just a lot of memories running through my mind about the struggles all three of those groups have really had. And, you know, all three groups are still struggling today. You know, I mean, we've made a lot of progress, but, um, there's a lot to go and it's so complicated and complex, you know, just 
what's involved in the histories of all three of um, those entities or groups of people that a lot was running through my mind and quite honestly um, you know I was trying to be very discreet when I was going through and videoing or um, just taking video but I just had to stop you know at one point I just forgot to hit record because I was just trying to process so much and all these thoughts were running through my mind and so I'd highly, highly, highly recommend that you come to the Gilchrist Museum if you're in the Tulsa area. Um, such beautiful works of art, and I'll include probably a second, you know, video with all the pictures and stills I took. I'll probably have to break it up into two videos, quite honestly, because it was so much. And I, you know, I, again, was trying to be very discreet, so there are a lot of parts that I didn't get, but you need to experience this for yourself, really. Watching a tour of a museum on video doesn't even do it halfway or, you know, a quarter of the justice it should have, so. Alright, so, back here, um, I want to take a little walk back here. It's like, if you can imagine, um, this is the back of the museum, okay? So the museum obviously wasn't always here, and uh, Mr. Gilcrease had a house that's kind of on the hill. So this wasn't here, and basically he could step out on his porch and see, I'm sure these, a lot of these trees are not old enough to have been here. Um, you know, when he lived here, you know, when he first started off, so his view, like you can't even see it through here, but I'll walk down. Yeah, this is, this is beautiful. Um, but, yeah, this is like kind of behind the, the museum. So, very nice area to come out and walk. And uh, again, there's that sun that we haven't seen in the past two weekends. So, I'm very, very delighted to be out here. The statue there of what appears to be a bear. I almost said beaver, but... So, man... You know, I didn't, uh, it's another th uh, one of those uh, enjoying the journey things. So yeah, this is going to be two or three videos. So, I mean, Tulsa is full of these things. So when you go to the Gilcrease Museum, you expect to see nice things, beautiful things. But man, this is all behind the museum. So pre-Columbian Garden, um, Pioneer Garden. So these things are so nice and this is you know people oklahoma gets a lot of flack because they're you know they're all running around in carriages and horses nobody has cars and stuff that's that's not oklahoma i mean some parts are rustic and rural and there's nothing wrong with that but when i think of oklahoma this this is really what i think about here this is this is exactly what i think of when i think of oklahoma so you know, um, just take time out, you know, whenever you're at an exhibit or you're going somewhere historical. Okay, guys, I have decided to go ahead and insert my final voiceover here uh, in this part of the video because I was trying to articulate myself and doing a poor job of it. Um, what I was basically trying to say is that, you know, I would encourage everyone to take time to smell the roses, so to speak when you're on your way to a certain destination or a certain goal in life because there's so much value and there uh, and so many things uh, insights and things to be gotten a lot of times on our journey to a specific destination or a goal and many times you know things that we encounter along the way shape us and mold us into a better person so when we arrive at that destination or that goal that we're seeking we're that much better off and it's funny a lot of times that we kind of miss this because in many cases we're going to a destination or we have a goal that other people have created like a degree or we're going to move to a different state or country and if you think about it the people who have gone before you and actually created or founded or heavily influence whatever destination or goal or achievement you're trying to attain took elements from that journey that they made 
to create or facilitate the creation or development of wherever you're heading or the goal that you're trying to achieve. I don't really know if that makes sense. Um, It does in my head. And um, for instance, with the Gilcrease Museum, I imagine that Thomas Gilcrease, I think he died in 1960. So, you know, it was the mid 1900s. He, he, He wasn't somebody from the 1700s or 1800s. But I imagine that part of his interest in artwork and, you know, different paintings and things like that originated from him, you know, being in this land, seeing this land and kind of wondering what the people were like that were here before him, who kind of shaped this land or inhabited it, inhabited the land, excuse me, before he was there. He may have saw a picture that's, you know, of some Native Americans and said, hmm, I wonder what all, uh, what you know, different tribes were in this area, you know, before I arrived here, and he may have acquired one painting, and then that led him to want to get another one, and he became fascinated with the lives and development of the cultures that preceded his arrival to this area, so that may or may not be true, but I think it's very likely that that was, you know, an influence on him, or maybe he was just, you know, a guy who loved art, (laughs) And there was no connection to a history thing. But I think in a lot of cases, people who like art like the fact that it captures a time or a setting that they were not in, they could not experience directly. And so that kind of ties into what I was saying. And with that being said, I would like to thank you all for watching. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video here. I hope you enjoyed it and or took something away from it. And I will see you in the next one. This is the back of the museum.